First, my name is Steve Esel. I'm Chief Operating Officer for um, CLNG. CLNG is a global industry advocacy organization, and its focus is increasing the understanding of the environmental and com commercial benefits of LNG as a marine fuel, and not simply LNG, but also the pathway that it offers to decarbonization through bio-LNG and ultimately synthetic LNG. Uh, well, decarbonize, the decarbonization of shipping is a, is a massive challenge, and, um, in there, the, and, and there are many discussions about how best to do it. Um, and many of these discussions, particularly when you talk about fuels like hydrogen and ammonia, are actually quite theoretical. The difference that BioLNG bio has, or the key difference that BioLNG has, is that it's commercially available now to, to shipping. Um, the biomethane market is significant, and this is in contrast to other green fuels that are being discussed in shipping, like methanol, like ammonia, like hydrogen. Um, the asset base is there, and it's growing. So by 2027, um, there will be about 1,000 LNG fuel ships in operation worldwide, which is a few percent of the global shipping fleet. Um, so the asset base is there. The bio-LNG, or more correctly, biomethane resource is being um, developed. Um, and um, in a, with, even within our membership, um, bio-LNG is um, commercially available now globally in about seven, 70 different um, uh, major ports. I think the challenge with bio-LNG is very similar to other renewable resources. It's a dispersed resource. So one of the, the big things that needs to happen, on, and I can only really talk on the demand side, is that the concept of mass balance is accepted, um, uh, not just in Europe, but globally. So what this means is, is that um, methane from a um, biomethane digester or anaerobic digester can be injected into the pipeline system and then taken off uh, at a liquefaction terminal in a very similar way to the way in which the power markets are being decarbonized. Um, so the important thing is that a regulatory mechanism is established so the demand signals can feed through from shipping to the actual biomethane uh, industry, the production side. This is happening in Europe. It's happening, um, uh, the, uh, it's been, the regulations have been established at the European level. They now need to be translated into um, uh, member state regulation. It's happening. Um, it also um, is happening in, in certain parts of the US as well. But this, this needs to be a global, a global um, uh, yeah, approach to, 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 to biomethane to make it available to shipping in the form of bio-LNG. I mean, we feel uh, uh, clearly we're an LNG or bio-LNG, uh, bio synthetic LNG advocacy organization. Um, and we think that in the future, there will be multiple fuels uh, in the maritime. We contrast it to, to today where most of, the, most of the, the shipping industry is fueled by um, uh, uh, fuel oil, which is what is left over the, <coughs> after the refining process. So we feel, um, you know, with decarbonization, you can no longer continue to burn fuel oil. So we see a, 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 a multi-fuel uh, future. Um, certainly, LNG is incredibly well placed at the moment because of all the alternative fuels that are currently being dis discussed for maritime. It actually has uh, the infrastructure, um, uh, the, the, the ships, as, as mentioned, the, the, the fleet is growing, um, which facilitates the introduction of um, um, bio, bio LNG and subsequently synthetic LNG. The other fuels are there is potential for other fuels. People are very excited by ammonia because there's no carbon atom. But what they forget is the massive, um, is the toxicity of ammonia. And um, it's not to say that ammonia can't be a significant fuel in the future, but there are massive safety hurdles to be addressed there, which will require massive investments. Um, Hydrogen is a lovely molecule. Again, no carbon atom, which is great for decarbonization but it's very tricky. It has to be um, uh, managed at about minus 260 degrees, so it's um, uh, uh, 
an extreme pro cryogenic problem. Um, and it's a very tricky molecule, it likes to escape. So, um, uh, and requires a huge amount of space on ships. So that hydrogen is also challenging, not to say there, there, there may not be innovations. Uh, methanol is also a um, contender for um, uh, um, decarbonizing shipping, but it's actually, it's a, still a very, very small market. It doesn't have a great deal of energy density and green methanol is much more expensive than bio uh, LNG. So, um, as to the future, all of these things could be possible, um, and our view is, is that um, ultimately the markets will decide which, uh, which, which fuels are adopted in which circumstances.